What's up guys, welcome back to Halfman of Tech, my name is Ben, your host. So finally when it comes to iOS 15.1, we now have the next beta update and as you can see, it's beta 4 that I'm updating to. This comes after one week since the release of beta 3 and as you can see on my iPhone X that I'm updating here, the update size comes in at exactly 493.9 megabytes and I was updating from iOS 15.1 beta 3 if you are waiting for the public beta uh, release then i would look forward to receiving the public beta as soon as tomorrow now as you can see here this update was actually quite impressive because it took about three seconds to download and about eight minutes to prepare so it was quite good and overly i'm happy with the speeds that i got during the update and the restart process and while updating to this update my device did not heat up in any way now as you can see here this is not all that re apple released today if we go to the apple developer page or rather the apple software update page you can see here that apple released mac os monterey beta 10 they also released ios as well as ipad os 15.1 beta 4 they released watch os 8.1 beta 4 and tv os 15.1 beta 4 now if you were to also see some other updates that were not listed that came out today, we have Audio OS 5.1 Beta 4 and Mac OS Pixel 11.6.1 release candidate, and you can see the associated build number that we got. Now, most of these updates I do cover here on the channel at Halfman Aftech. So, if that is something that interests you, then a sub to the channel would really be appreciated as we do this almost every day. Now, now, when it comes to some of the software changes that came with this update, if we go into settings and go to general and go to the about this iPhone section here, you can see the new build number that we have and it's 19B5068A. So we now have a build number that has an A at the end as you can see and in terms of stability A tends to be the best and most stable beta before a release candidate. Before this on iOS 15.1 beta 4 we had the build number that ended with a D so in a sense we took three steps in the positive direction and if you go to see in the modern framework version, you can see it here and it's still the same 5.00.00. .00. When it comes to some of the new features and changes that came with iOS 15.1 beta 4, in all honesty, there isn't much, but there's one that relates to iPadOS 15.1 beta 4. So we know that in the future with universal control that's coming to macOS 12, it will allow your cursor and keyboard to move between any Apple device that is Mac or iPad as long as it's signed into your iCloud and on macOS 12 beta 10 that is the latest macOS beta you can see that it gives us hope that this feature is going to be coming pretty soon although it's not fully here but it does mention it and on the iPad it might not show but on the Mac it took a step forward as this is the first time on Mac OS 12 that Apple has sort of allowed users to see this menu. So that is the change that came with this update. And for some users, they are reporting some splash screens when it comes to some specific apps. So for me, I didn't see those splash screens, so I won't cover them here on the channel. If you go to the release notes of iOS 15.1 beta 4, so let's click here where it says release notes. You can see here that there isn't much that changed and you can see that we just have core data issue, NSE expressions, and also home. We have an issue when it comes to Swift UI, telephony, and voiceover, and that's as much as it goes. So most of the issues aren't mentioned actually when it comes to like green tint, when it comes to the storage bug and so on. And when it comes to FaceTime on SharePlay, so if you actually are FaceTiming someone, it is working smooth. I tried it out and you can share like podcast, you can share music, you can share Apple TV content and so on. So 
as you can see here that is mainly most of the new features and changes now i do have some wallpapers that i would like to show you as you can see these are some of the um, wallpapers that were created to go in accordance with the apple unleashed event that's going to take place on uh, monday the october 18th so if you actually go to you the events.apple.com you'll be able to see this page here and if you click here you'll actually be able to see the object here and you can see that it tells you or gives you a hint that on october 18th we do have an apple event and it's unleashed and you can add this to your calendar should you wish to now in terms of when we could see this update since we do have a date that's set and confirmed for the apple event i would expect this update to be released sometime during the week of the 18th so perhaps after the apple event on monday on the 18th of october we'll get the release candidate version of ios 15.1 and then maybe a day or two or even on the 21st of october we could get this version being released as ios 15.1 and ipad os 15.1 to all supported devices so i'm going to be covering that on the channel and i can't wait for you to be able to enjoy most of these new features and changes now in terms of uh, some issues that are there for me like i mentioned my device didn't heat up during the update process which was quite good and also uh, if you have like an iPhone that was experiencing some storage bug or that was showing that it's using more storage than it actually has, for me, that issue has been resolved. But for some users, that issue hasn't yet been resolved. So maybe with the release candidate, Apple will brush out some of these bugs and issues. And other than that, that's how this update came in for me. If you'd like these more papers, do let me know in the comment section below and stay safe. And I'll definitely see you in the next video very soon. Peace.